I'm an admirer in many ways of what's going on in Florida, you know, with DeSantis. But him and Rufo, who I also think has got a bit of a clue, are trying to, what would you say, limit or even ban critical race theory. And the problem with that is you can't define it, right? Right. So how do you... How do you control something you can't define? And the answer is you battle it out on the battleground of ideas. Because as soon as you start to try to define it and then try to censor it, well, first of all, that's just going to grow because that's how those things work. You know, like where does, where does critical race theory shade into Marxism? Well, who the hell knows? Where does Marxism f- f- shade into socialism? Well, that's an even harder question. Then where does socialism shade into, you know, just being on the side of the working class? Well, all that's fuzzy beyond belief. And so once you get to the point where the government has to step in and regulate, say, what education systems are doing, you're already in deep trouble. And because it can't, I don't see how it can really be done because I, I can't define critical race theory. You know, I mean, more or less, you can get some sense of the cloud of ideas that's associated with it. But, but trying to draw the lines, how are you going to do that? And then, of course, you enable inevitably no matter what your goal is to begin with, you're going to control a certain form, let's say, of pathological communication, misinformation. That's just going to play into the hands of people who like to censor, and that's just as likely on the right as it is on the left. Mm. So, no, it's a real dangerous game. And is the problem, like, the term critical race theory is, it's open to interpretation. Yeah, well, it's often even hard, except in retrospect, to understand a lot of what these things actually are, you know, because new clouds of ideas emerge and they kind of have an animating spirit and they they have a set of associated, what would you say, presumptions, and you can often only see what that is in retrospect. You know, it took me a long time to understand whatever existentialism was enough to sort of define it, phenomenology, these different schools of thought that occupied the thoughts of... uh, of psychological investigators over a couple of centuries, postmodernism, modernism, you know. It's, it's not an easy thing to, to extract out the gist of those and define them. Plus, plus, as I said, they have very fuzzy boundaries. So, well, What I saw with DeSantis was there was, uh, he had a concern that, they, that it wasn't just black history that they were putting into this critical race theory, but that he saw that there was queer theory which was in this thing that they were teaching in school. And like, what does that have any, how does that have anything to do with black history? Like, yeah. why is queer theory inserted Yeah, into well, that? I, think, I think the way those are linked is essentially through what you might regard as, well, it's an implicit Marxism, but it's even deeper than Marxism. So if you're a Marxist, you basically, you have a heuristic that simplifies the world. And that heuristic is that you can understand any social relationship from, well, from an intimate relationship all the way up to the state by just dividing the parties, let's call them the narrative partners in a discussion or an interaction into those who are oppressed and victimized and those who are taking advantage of them and profiting. That's basic Marxist theory of economics. And there's obviously some truth in that because when systems become corrupt, that's how they operate, right? It's exploitation and victimization. And every system tends towards corruption. And so, and if you're if your eyes are open a little bit, or if you're, let's call it, if you've moved from naivety to cynicism, then you can see every interaction as a power dynamic. And then that drives, as soon as you have that established, that idea that the basic relationship is one of power, well, then you can see, well, there's no difference between what's happened to queer people in relationship to those in power and what's happened to black people in relationship to those in power. Mm. It's But it's united by that underlying, that's why I always make a case for the domination of something like postmodernism and Marxism. You know, I've been criticized for that, but I think it's an accurate association. The postmodernists figured out, and they were right about this, that we see the world through a story. Now, that turns out to be something unbelievably complicated, and I think all the top-end neuroscientists like Carl Friston are, what would you call, converging on this presumption that you have to see the world through a story. And the postmodernists actually figured that out. The French postmodernists, you know, Foucault and Derrida and people like that. But then they did something that was a sleight of hand. And this was, this all happened in the 1970s. They said, well, we have to see the world through a story. And even if you're a scientist, you're not exactly objective because there's a narrative driving your work that you might be unaware of. That's your implicit narrative. That's what might be implicitly biasing you. But um, they jumped to the conclusion that the underlying narrative was one of power. 
It's basically that all human relationships are predicated on power. And, you, you know, there isn't a more cynical viewpoint than that. And it's easy to take apart, you know, if you think about it for a moment in a, in a practical sense. If your marriage is just based on power, first of all, it's an unpleasant place because it's, tyr- it's tyrant and slave. And second, like, good luck with that. Because people aren't that easy to tyrannize, you know. Like maybe you have a willing slave in your wife, but I doubt it. If you're just trying to play power games with her, she's going to fight back with everything she's got. And then if you have friends, it's like that's a relationship of mutual exploitation, is it? Then you're just a bully with henchmen, and they're going to stab you in the back the first chance they get. You're a mob man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a mob leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, worse than that even. A dictator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a dictator. You're a dictator, you know. Uh, And... You know, people say, well, look at how successful dictator psychopaths can be. But I look at them and I think, well, that's your definition of success. Yeah, man. what is success? I mean, yeah. how, are you You're the biggest devil fulfilled? in hell. Yeah, are you happy? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, well, is- the leader of a bad place might be the person who's worst off. 